Samantha Bauer and I did my presentation on professional sports. Alright, so as a summary for Chapter 10, um, the professional sport industry is described as events and exhibitions in which athletes compete individually or as teams and are paid for their performance. Um, professional sports teams receive revenue from ticket sales, premium seating, and the majority from the sales of media rights to like broadcasting news channels and things like that. North America is home to five dominant professional leagues, the Major League Baseball, uh, National Football League, National Basketball Association, National Hockey League, and Major League Soccer. So a little history about uh, professional sport leagues. The first professional team was the Cincinnati Red Stockings, and they were founded in 1869. Uh, the first professional league, known as the National League, was formed in 1876. The Cincinnati Red Stockings' original team payroll was only $9,300, which means each player got paid around $930, so they've come a long way throughout the years. Um, National League's constitution and bylaws continue as a model today. They have limit on franchise movement, club territorial rights, and um, a mechanism for expansion of a club. They now have a system of self-governance -gover versus the old corporate governance model. The corporate governance model owners act as a board of directors, and the commissioner is like the CEO and in charge of everything. Um, the MLS, WNBA, Arena Football League, Major League Lacrosse, and National Lacrosse League established themselves as single entities to avoid antitrust liability and to create centralized fiscal control. A single entity is not subject to the Section 1 Sherman Antitrust and governed by substance rather than form. So some things about the ownership. Um, many teams started out as like a hobby for wealthy families and they owned them and they were known as mom and pop businesses, whereas today only NFL teams are owned privately and they're run as a business rather than just a hobby. They're, in order to own a team, they must be granted permission from the ownership committee of the league that they're in. The NFL, um, even though they have private owners, the NFL brand themselves own all team logos and trademarks, league property rights, and distributes revenue from those rights to each club. They also prohibit corporate and public ownership along with uh, cross-franchise ownership, so you can't own a football team and a ba baseball or basketball team. Now some things about individual professional sport. Uh, it, existed, it exists around a professional tour of events, meets, or matches. A very popular example is the PGA Tour, which is a golf tour. Golf is one of the biggest individual uh, professional sports. It was created in January of 1916 when a New York department store magnet gathered area golf professionals and amateurs to create national organization that would promote the game of golf and get kind of the word out there and everything that they do. Originally, it, there was no distinction between club and touring professionals like there is today. And the television changed the game a lot by paying for the programming and turning golf into more of a business rather than a game or sport. So league revenues, franchise values, and revenue generation. Leagues derive revenue from national television, radio contracts, league-wide licensing, and league-wide sponsorship programs. They do not get their money from local broadcasting, gate receipts, preferred seating sales, or any of the stadium revenues. Those all go directly to the teams, which has created competitive balance programs among the teams. Uh, franchise costs make single ownership challenging. Most need to uh, diversify their investments to prevent franchise ownership, which also creates the race for revenue, which led to the, free, the franchise free agency. Team owners threatened to move their teams if, dem if their demands were not met, like new stadiums, renovations, or better lease. Because baseball is exempt from the antitrust law, that's why we don't see baseball teams relocating because they can't uh, threaten to move their teams away. A few legal issues. Um, almost all areas of law are relevant to uh, the professional sport industry, but the most prevalent are dealing with contracts, the antitrust labor, intellectual property, which is uh, trademark and licensing. Some contract disputes. 
in which all team sport athletes now have to sign a standard player contract for their league because of, they've had so many um, contract disagreements and disputes over which team which team retains rights to a player trying to move from one league to another is a very popular contract dispute. In antitrust law disputes, the Major League Baseball is exempt from these laws again because they're not part of the antitrust laws. And all professional sport leagues adopt restrictive practices to provide financial stability and balance between their teams. A challenging issue is the salary caps that are placed on all the professional teams. They're used in the AFL, the NBA, NFL, NHL, WNRA, and the ECHL, and the NLL. They are intended to create equality among teams by limiting how much a team can spend on its players' salaries. They're adjusted annually depending on how much money they take in and how much money they want to uh, distribute among the players. Owners must negotiate with their players because the cap impacts their wages and they force teams to cut established players or uh, renegotiate the contracts to make room under the cap in order to sign another player that they want. And they provide a team with spending minimums so low revenue teams are prevented from cutting their payrolls to stay competitive. So career implications, which are like what you can do with uh, professional sport, include the commissioner, which must understand sports and the various league documents like rules, regulations, bylaws, standard player contract, collective bargaining, and so on. They have to have good neg negotiating skills. They have to be able to work with others and handle pressure and deal with the media. The league office personnel. Um, has many available jobs. They have a variety of positions that vary in number and skill between the different leagues. And they can include administration, broadcasting, corporate affairs, editorial, finance, legal operations, player programs, public relations, security, and special events. And then there's the team general manager who is in charge of all player personnel decisions which include scouting and drafting and renegotiating contracts with players and their agents. And then the front office personnel has a variety of jobs, much like the league office, but they don't have as many. Uh, they have a wide variety of positions that include a chairman or an owner, a uh, president or chief operating officer, two executive vice presidents, three senior vice presidents, two vice presidents, a director of player personnel, a sales staff of 17, a customer service staff, a game operations staff, and many others like coaches, scouts, broadcasters, accountants, and administrative assistants. And that's all.